Hey guys, this is your host Eric. Today we are going to watch fantasy genre movie called Symbol. Spoilers ahead, turn on your subtitle, I greatly appreciate your support. Enjoy the video. A Japanese man in very colorful pajamas wakes up in a white, empty room with no doors or windows and a ceiling that can't be seen. When he gets close to one of the walls to look at it more closely, he sees a strange shape sticking out of it that looks like a male member. After poking it a few times, he presses the tip. This makes hundreds of baby angels come out of the floor and walls, giggle, and stay there for a few seconds before going back. One thing they leave behind, though, is that now all of their bodies are sticking out of the floor and wall. This is what the phase is called. As he sniffs the finger, he used to touch the button with the strange shape. The man screams in fear, then cries out and begs for help from anyone nearby, but no one helps him. He starts pressing the different buttons to see what will happen. Every time he does this, a different random object, from a small toothbrush to a big vase, falls into the room. When he presses the same button again, he gets the same thing. Because he is testing this idea on one button, he gets a big pile of chops. His happiness doesn't last long. But when he presses the button next to the chopsticks, a small cart comes out of the wall and hits him in the legs. He screams in pain and presses the next button, which turns into a butt that farts on his face. After a while, the man has put a lot of different things in the room. When he throws the ball at the wall, it presses a button that gives him some sushi. This makes him happy because he's been hungry, but he realizes that he's been missing soy. He keeps asking his captors for it, but they never tell him. So he presses one of the buttons over and over until he has a bunch of sushi in front of him but no sauce. The man eats the sushi, which he thinks is pretty good. When he's done with the last piece, he presses the button for more, and when a bottle of soy sauce finally comes, he gets very angry. After pushing the bottle out of the way in anger, he presses a different button and gets a pair of old-fashioned 3D glasses. When he puts them on, he sees a baby angel pointing at his member. The man is happy because he thinks he may have found the answer. But when he presses that button, all he gets is a countdown and a big butt that comes down from above and farts on him. After a few hours, he's read. He has five volumes of a manga that he likes a lot. But when he presses a button for the sixth, he gets the seventh instead. Frustrated, he tries other buttons, which give him the eight and nine, but still no. But when he presses the last button, he gets a big surprise. It pulls out a piece of the wall that covers a door. The man is happy to have found this, but in his excitement, he can't remember which button opens the door. He picks one at random and, to his shock, sees a man from an African tribe running from wall to wall. He makes the next one fall on his head. The third one is the one he needs, and he runs to it as soon as the wall opens, only to have it close on him. The same thing happens on his second try, and that's when he figures out that the door stays open as long as the member tip is down. So he starts to try different things to do it. First, he presses it with his foot to get into a runner position. Next, he throws a fly water at it from as far away as he can, hoping that the distance will affect his running time. None of these work, and neither does pulling it with a jump rope or hitting it with air from a fan. After pushing the button, his next plan is to get on the card and push it. But he comes to accept after a few tries. He just can't do it. He needs to find a way to keep the tip of the button down. He puts the big vase on top of it, but the button keeps sticking back up. The man figures out that he needs to fill the vase with something heavy to make it stay down. He tries the water button first, but it doesn't work. No matter how hard he tries, he can't change the flow of the water. Nowhere else but on him does it fall. He tries again by filling the vase with sushi, but it gets so heavy that he just can't. The vase's neck is also too small for him to put his hand through, so the man has no choice but to use chopsticks to pull pieces of sushi off a bunch of rolls. After a few seconds, when he is far enough away, he can just barely pick up the vase and move it closer to the button. When he gets there, he has to put the vase on the floor because he can't remember which button it was. When he tries one, the African tribesman comes out and accidentally bumps into the vase's base, causing it to crack and break in. This drives the man crazy, and as he screams and yells non-stop, he finds the right button and starts putting sushi on it. This, too, doesn't work, and the little member keeps showing up in the rice. The man then tries to cover the button with tape, tape, and a steel plate, but none of these work. The door hitting him in the back hurts, so the man takes painkillers and takes a nap. When he wakes up, he wants to brush his teeth, so he presses a button to get water. But it was the wrong button, and this one shows a rope falling from the ceiling. This makes him feel better right away because it makes him think of a new plan. He opens the door, then uses the rope to swing himself across the room and get to the other side before the door closes. When he tries to open the door behind the fake wall, however, he finds that it is locked. He gets back to the room just as the door is closing, but it still hits him on the way out. Frustrated, he kicks the wall, which makes one of the buttons work and shows the key floating in the middle of the room. But, just like with the door, it goes away when you press the button again. So, the man must figure out how to keep both the key in the room and the door open. 
First, he needs to find the button again because he got sidetracked and lost it. He can do this by looking roughly where his foot would have landed. When he kicked the wall, he pushed a button and a dog barked at him from inside the wall. The same thing happens when I press the next button, but the third time is a charm. While keeping his eyes on the button and pointing his hand toward it, the man walks backward and picks up a piece of sushi. He takes it back to the wall to mark the right button, but when he presses it, the dog comes back out. He finds the button faster this time and moves on with his plan. He makes the rope appear and swings on it to reach the different buttons, but it's still enough. As he falls, he sees a plunger on the floor. He pushed one of the many buttons and got a clue about how to fix his small problem. He can touch the wall with the plunger and push himself forward. After the first attempt failed, the plan works perfectly. By swinging on the rope and pushing himself with the plunger, he is able to press the button key, grab the key, press the door button, and reach the door before it closes. He doesn't waste any time and quickly turns the key in the lock. When he tries to open the door, however, he finds a nasty surprise. It also has a lock on the top that you can only open with three numbers. The man runs out of the door and gets hit by it as it closes. In anger, he throws the plunger at the opposite wall, which makes the button that lets the African tribesmen out work. As he sees him walk by, he comes to a realization. On his forehead are three numbers, which must be the combination he needs. Since the man only has a limited amount of time behind the door, he swings on the rope and jumps three times, once for each number that needs to be put in. The third time, he stays put and opens the door, which is a little hard to move and requires him to push harder. When he finally does it, the piece of wall behind him closes, trapping him and leaving him without enough room to finish opening the door. Devastated, the man sits on the floor and starts crying thinking about how much fun he had with the things he got from the buttons. He had been locked up there too, but at least he had room to move and things to do. Now he realizes that he didn't appreciate what he had at the time. He feels a breeze on his face from the left wall all of a sudden. When he touches it, he sees a crack that shows it's broken. He doesn't waste any time and pushes the panel open right away. He then runs out of the room and soon comes to a mysterious hallway floating in a completely dark area. He seems to run toward an exit for a very long time. And by the time he gets to a room, his hair is longer and the colors on his pajamas have faded. This room is also empty. And when he walks in, the door shuts behind him. But instead of baby angels, there are grown-up ones here that also go into the wall and only leave behind their wings. This part is called practice. In the meantime, Antonio's family in a city in Mexico is worried because Antonio's father, a wrestler known as Escargo Man, is acting more secretive than usual. His wife thinks it might be because his next opponent is a lot younger than he is, but the grandfather says that experience, not age, is what matters. Karen, the sister of Escargo Man's daughter, picks him up in her truck and drives him to the wrestling ring so he can get ready early by changing clothes and praying to Antonio's classmates pick on him at school because he bet on Escargo Man. They call him a weak loser. As the time for the match to start gets closer, Karen picks up Antonio and their grandfather in her van and drives them to see Escargo Man in action. Karen doesn't stay, though. Right before the show starts, Antonio and his grandfather find some of the last seats. The Northern Tough Ones, made up of Super Demon and T, are the first team to enter the ring. Then Escargo Man and his partner, Silver Eagle, come as the team name, Kiss Me A Lot. Silver Eagle is the first one to fight for his team. He gets off to a great start, but the Northern Tough Ones quickly beat him when they fight him all at once instead of one by one. They keep pointing at Escargo Man and asking him to join the fight but he won't until Silver Eagle pulls a trick that makes Super Demon and Tequila Joe hit each other, letting him get away. It doesn't take long for Escargo Man to lose, but just as his opponent is about to hit him with a chair, the man in the mysterious room presses a member button. This makes Escargo Man's neck magically grow longer, allowing him to hit both of his opponents in the room with a blow to the head. The fact that nothing happens draws the man's attention, so he keeps pressing the same button, which makes Escargo Man hit Silver Eagle, the referee, Antonio and even the bell couldn't figure out what was going on. The man starts to try out various buttons. During a show in Los Angeles, one person makes the singer of a metal band breathe fire over the crowd. The other makes a Russian magician fail his trick when he tries to make his assistant vanish. And the third one makes a Chinese man's own dogs bark at him. The man is about to give up when he sees light coming from above. Unlike the last room, this one doesn't have a ceiling, and he can see angels flying around in the distance. He decides to do something he's never done before. This time, instead of pressing the member buttons, he'll use them to climb them. It works, and every time he grabs or steps on a button, something amazing happens on Earth, like flowers opening or an elephant dying. The higher he goes, the more complicated the effects get. It's not just nature anymore. There's also humanity in both small and big things, like a toaster and landing on the moon. By the time he gets to the top, the man's hair and beard have grown out, and he no longer needs to hold onto the wall. Now he can float like the angels, 
and using all the training he got in the other rooms. He accepts his role as god and starts picking humanity's biggest hits on purpose instead of pushing buttons at random. By the time he's done, he's surrounded by feathers instead of walls, and he goes through a glowing portal to get to the last room. This one has pictures of the continents on the walls, and the man is about to press a big button that says member. This part is called future. We really appreciate you watching. If you enjoy this video, please give it a like. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel with the notification bell because it is really important for us. Thank you.